Now from CBS 4 News, this is Facing South Florida with Jim DeFeedy. Good morning, I'm Jim DeFeedy and welcome to Facing South Florida. Students at Stoneman Douglas High returned to school this week. It was a far from normal affair as scores of police lined the streets. Nevertheless, it was a welcome first step for many of them. In Tallahassee, several bills are still moving through the process. It's clear there will be no assault weapons ban by the Republican legislature, but it's also unclear what may actually make it through. And then there was Washington, where President Trump held a jaw-dropping meeting with members of Congress on guns. He endorsed, or seemed to endorse at least, universal background checks, closing the so-called gun show loophole. He called on raising the age to buy assault weapons from 18 to 21 as well. It doesn't make sense that I have to wait till I'm 21 to get a handgun, but I can get this weapon at 18. I don't know. So I was just curious as to what you did in your bill. We, you don't we, didn't, we didn't address it, Mr. President. Look, I think you know we, why? Because you're afraid of the NRA, right? <laughs> That theme of saying how others are afraid of the NRA, but he isn't, is something the president will return to time and again. He said it would be easy, for instance, to get the 60 votes for a wide-ranging gun bill. I'm not even worried about 60 votes. I really believe that 60 votes, 60 percent, meaning, is, should be so easy. It should be a should be 100 percent. Uh, Chris, did you have something? No, no, no. I just I think you underestimate the power of the gun lobby. And they do have great power. I agree with that. They have great power over you people. They have less power over me. I don't need, I don't, what do I need? <laughs> he still advocated the idea of arming qualified teachers in schools, but most of his proposals delighted Democrats. At one point, he even went further than any Democrat I've ever heard, suggesting that we, when talking about mental health, we could actually take guns away from people without any due process. I'd like to take the firearms first and then go to court, because that's another system, because a lot of times by the time you go to court, it takes so long to go to court to get the due process procedures. Uh, I like taking the guns early, like in this crazy man's case that just took place in Florida. He had a lot of fires. They saw everything. To go to court would have taken a long time. So you could do exactly what you're saying, but take the guns first, go through due process second. We just think Take the guns. Take the guns and worry about due process later. Through the eight years of the Obama administration, Republicans and the NRA spread the myth that Obama was coming for their guns. He wasn't. But now the Republican president is saying, take the guns first. And the Republicans in the room sat there slack-jawed. What does it all mean? My guest this morning was there in the room with the president. Congressman Ted Deutsch represents the Parkland area and has been a loud and steady voice demanding change from Congress. Congressman, thank you for joining us. Good to be with you. Thanks, Jim. So I want to, we, we have time to sort of talk about a lot of things, but I guess I want to get your impressions of being in that room. I mean, we watch it on TV, but yeah. it's different when you're sitting just a few seats away from the president and reading the reaction on the faces of some of your Republican colleagues. What was that like? Uh, well, it was pretty astounding to watch the reaction when the president looked at my colleagues, looked at members of the House and Senate and repeatedly told them that they're petrified of the NRA, they're afraid of the NRA, uh, that we need to, to take action to do what everything he talked about has broad bipartisan support. The only place it doesn't enjoy full support is in Congress because of the power of the gun lobby. And the president pointed that out. That was very powerful. If this is going to get done, if we're going to take meaningful action, he's got to push to make that happen. He's got to push those Republicans in the House and Senate who have prevented bills from coming to the floor, uh, and he seemed committed to doing just that. And as long as he's saying the right things, as long as he's pushing, uh, we want to be supportive of that effort so that we can take action in response to this horrific tragedy in in Parkland. When the when the meeting ended and the cameras were were yeah. gone and everyone is sort of filing out, was there a lot of muttering among the Republicans like what just happened? Well, listen, there were uh, the, the looks on people's faces, especially. He did something really important. The president actually did something really important when he, he looked at, at one of my colleagues, he looked at Steve Scalise and, and said, uh, we're not going to do this concealed carry bill, which is a terrible bill that would, make, that would make Florida less safe. It would have more guns all over the country. So let's just, uh, for, yeah. for, stop for a second, because let's just say the Concealed yeah. Carry Reciprocity Act right. is a bill that would basically say that if you've got a permit to carry a concealed weapon in any state in the country, right. you can travel to any other state with it. So right. in other words, essentially, 
essentially what you do is the weakest, most lax gun uh, concealed weapons law becomes the law of, this, of the country. Right. So in states like Florida, where there are requirements to get a concealed carry permit, uh, you would allow people from other states where those requirements don't exist to simply bring their guns in. It's a terrible idea. Republicans and, love it, though. And the, and the House right. Republicans have attached it to the fixing of, they did. of, of, of uh, the, the background the, checks. Ba, ba, right. The database. Fix Nick's bill. Right. They did. Um, it, but it's a terrible idea. But what was important about the other day is it the, for the president to look at the sponsor of that legislation and say, we're not doing that now. It doesn't have broad bipartisan support. We're not going to let this prevent other meaningful uh, steps to curb gun violence from happening. So that's now the president is the president going to stick to that? I don't know. Well, that's always the question. That. But it was really important for him to put that out there. The other thing, Jim, that I tried, the point I tried to make to the president is when he acknowledged that there are some things that don't enjoy broad bipartisan support, there are differences of opinion, those shouldn't be in this bill. And when he talked about his one of his solutions, which is arming all of the teachers, uh, again, that's that's not widely supported, to put it mildly. The majority, of overwhelming majority of people, especially in here in Florida, think it's a, it's a really bad idea. That shouldn't be in the bill either. We'll see, but that's the kind of, that's the kind of discussion that's necessary if we're going to get something done. Now, the president famously, a few weeks ago during the discussion on DACA, very yeah. similar discussion, on Tuesday, he was all supportive, saying all the things right. the Democrats in the room wanted to hear. Right. And by Thursday, he had backpedaled and moved against it completely. And I just want to point out, we're taping this on Friday. Earlier today, first, the uh, lobbyist for the NRA, Chris Cox, put out a tweet this morning saying, uh, or I guess it was late last night. I had a great meeting tonight with real Donald Trump and the vice president. We want safe schools, mental health reform to keep guns away from dangerous people. POTUS and V POTUS support the Second Amendment, support strong due process, don't want gun control. And then the president followed that up with uh, his own tweet saying, good, great meeting in the Oval Office tonight with the NRA. Yeah. So the NRA is signaling that they met with the president yeah. and he said, don't worry, everything's going to be fine. Yeah, look, the NRA... I the, here's what the NRA is dealing with right now at this moment. They're dealing with this sea change that's happening all around them that they can't control. They look at what these kids, these student survivors from Stoneman Douglas have done, the fact that more than a dozen companies have severed their ties with the NRA, the fact that, that these major companies, Dix and Walmart and others, have taken steps to raise the age to buy a gun to, to 21 or to stop selling assault weapons or both, and they're and they realize that this isn't going to stop. This movement is just beginning. Of course they're going to put out a tweet that says that, that things went well. They're trying to preserve the position that they've held throughout, which is they get to decide gun policy. They don't get to decide gun policy. For all of the people who have said, well, these, these voters, they're single-issue voters. It's all they care about. Jim, i got to tell you, there is a growing and loud and ferocious group of voters for whom there is one policy they care about in the next election, and that's whether you're willing to take action to stop guns and keep our kids safe. And I think you've just hit a very important point. People talk about the power and the clout of the NRA and think that it's directly tied to the money. Money is always good in politics. But what has always given the NRA cloud is a five million member base that are single mindedly focused and will vote on that single issue when it comes election time. And that's what scares members of Congress more than the money may be pumped in. You're saying, am I correct, Democrats and others who are Republican have to be single-issue voters on the other side of this issue. Right. The number, but it, it's, this is not a, here, here's the difference. This is not a partisan issue. The number of people that I've heard from Democrats and Republicans, Republicans especially, Republican friends, Republican friends of mine who have said, I've had enough. I've had enough of people being beholden to the companies that make these guns that are being used to kill kids in school. From now on, if you're not with me on curbing gun violence, if you're not with me on banning weapons of war, I'm not supporting you. And that's a really powerful movement, and it's just beginning. I want There's just one more bit of sound I want to sure. play, and then we'll take a break, and we've got a lot more to talk okay. about. But this was also from the media. I just want to sort of wrap this up. Okay. This was the president talking about the black market for guns, how people buy these AR-15 type rifles. And he seems to have a novel idea. Ideas to how people get them. Let's play that sound. 
You have weapons on the street. That's what we're talking about with black market. These are black market weapons. And, you know, the problem, Diane, is that these aren't where you walk into a store and buy. These are where somebody hands you a gun and you hand them Oh, no, some you money. go into a store and you can buy an, an AR-15. You can. You can buy a Tech 9 I mean, you can buy all these weapons. Well, this is what you're going Light to have to discuss. I'm speechless. The President of the United States talking about gun issues did, was not aware that you could walk into a store, a Dick's Sporting Goods store, you know, or others, and buy this type of weapon. He didn't know that. Look, here's the thing. I'm looking for anything I can work with coming out of the President's mouth. And it was the end of that when he said, well, we're going to have to look at that. And then he pivoted, as he did throughout, to Manchin and Toomey, who have the bipartisan universal background check bill that got 54 votes in the Senate, majority of the Senate, couldn't get 60, so they couldn't go forward. And, and he kept saying, we've got to build upon that, we've got to build upon that. Uh, we, the universal background checks, making sure we close the gun show loophole so that everyone has to get a, a background check wherever they buy a gun. Yeah, I, I'm, the president may not be focused on that, but if he's going to, to, to push this legislation, if he's willing, even after the NRA says that they had this great meeting, if he's willing to remember what he said at this meeting, which is we have to do something and people shouldn't be afraid of the NRA, and that includes includes the president, then we'll be in a position to go forward. All right, let's take a break. We'll come back. We'll talk more. And we'll talk about this movement that's really started. It's more than just legislation. When we come back with Congressman Ted Deutsch.